Not everyone is a people person, and there are plenty who prefer nature and animals as their acquaintances rather than other humans. But finding somewhere to live that suits those preferences is not all that straightforward. Until now. From a house made of stone to one at the top of a cliff, here are 15 homes that would suit people who hate the outside world. Number 15, El Array Island. For years, a picture of an isolated house sitting upon dozens of acres of land on an island circulated the internet, with no one really knowing what it was all about. Some speculated that the house belonged to singer Bjork, while others thought it was a celebrity house or even one in case of a zombie apocalypse. Given its isolated position, the Vestmana AR island known as El Array off Iceland's southern coast was a constant source of rumor and speculation. Did someone who really hated the outside world live there? As it turns out, no. Uh, well, kind of. Around 300 years ago, five people lived on El Array and decided to live as a community away from the mainland. They wanted to survive on raising cattle, fishing, and hunting puffin. All went well for 200 years, but opportunities were far greater on the mainland. Over time, the families left and built a lodge that they could use for years to come during the puffin hunting season. The house is still in use during summer for hunting, but it has no running water or electricity. Before we go on, we have a cool challenge for y'all. It'll take about five seconds to complete. Uh, let's make a deal. Just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 10 years of amazing luck and fortune. Try it. It actually works. Now it's time for the star topic. Many people consider the American dream as being able to live in a lovely house on a beautiful street surrounded by other lovely homes that look identical to yours. You know all your neighbors and everyone's living in everyone else's pocket. But one guy disagreed. We were sent this photo by Max of a Cessna plane on a small island. Max said living on an island with only access by plane or boat was a far better option than suburban streets. Do you think someone really lives isolated like this, or is it a holiday home of some sort? Could you live like this? Comment down below with the hashtag star topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14, Village of Gasadollar. Imagine that these are your choices to get a home. Hike over mountain terrain over 2,000 feet high, followed by a miles-long trek, or clamber up a giant rock face from a boat. That was the reality for anyone living in the village of Gasadollar. The tiny village of Gasadollar, which I'm definitely pronouncing correctly, is located on the Faroe Islands, cut off from civilization by a ring of mountains and a tall cliff that overlooks the sea. If you're not one to spend a lot of time hanging out with people, then this island would be a paradise for you. Up until recently, the only way to access it was from stairs carved into the rock face from the ocean and a very challenging mountain journey. Journey. Today, things are slightly better, but not by much. The landlocked region is only home to a handful of people who work the land, but a new tunnel blasted into the mountains means things might be looking up. With vehicle access now possible, there is hope for those who do like people to see the population rise from the mere 18 who called it home in 2012. Number 13. Casa do Penedo State House some families and individuals use caravans or tents as holiday homes. Others invest in large RVs. Then there are those who see rocks and think, oh, that would make a nice home. <laughs> and that's the story of Casa do Penedo in the Faf region of northern Portugal. Back in 1972, holidaymakers decided they wanted a getaway with a bit of a difference. Construction began of an ancient-looking home that was not all too different from something you'd find in the Flint Stone's hometown. It was located all on its own in the countryside and consisted of rocks with a roof, windows, a door, and a chimney. There's plenty left to the imagination. On the inside, the isolated rock house with no electricity
necessity has log furniture and a giant 550 pound couch made from a eucalyptus tree. If you wanted to get away from the outside world and its modern ways, the Casa do Panito State House would be an excellent place to start. It's no longer a holiday home, but it is somewhere you can visit if you happen to be passing through Portugal. Number 12. The Crystal Mill if you're really not fond of people, then living in the Crystal Mill in Colorado is probably going to appeal. It's that tricky to access that people need to sign a waiver just to get that perfect photograph when they visit. The Crystal Mill was a power plant known as the Sheep Mountain Powerhouse that was built in 1892 along the Crystal River. It ventilated mines in the area and powered pneumatic tools. While it sits abandoned now, it would certainly appeal to anyone who would want to isolate themselves from others as as much as possible. It's only accessible by challenging roads made of shale and granite, and many a vehicle has ended up upside down on the journey to get there. The narrow, bumpy, mountainous road is not for the faint of heart. The mill itself teeters on a sizable rocky face with the Crystal River flowing past. Homemade ladder access is the only way to get to it. If you don't mind lugging up one bag of groceries at a time, then this old mill would be perfect for your inner hermit. Number 11, Kotsky Pillar. Spending some time away from people and the hustle and bustle of everyday life can be good for the soul. That's epic! Aha! Or so one man found by living in an old church on a limestone column around 130 feet from the ground. The Kotsky Pillar is located in the village of Kotsky, an Imereti region in western Georgia. The structure on the rock was built by the Stylites and used from the 9th century until the Ottoman invasion of the 15th century. It is only accessible via ladder. The limestone rock has three hermit cells, a church, a wine cellar, a curtain wall, and a stone crib. It was supposedly built for Christian ascetics who wanted to spend their days in solitude on high pillars to get closer to God. It was rediscovered in 1944 by a Georgian mountaineer before becoming home to Maxime Kafdarazzi in 1993. In 2013, Maxime gave an interview about why he decided to live on the pillar. He said that after being released from prison on drug charges, he wanted to purge himself of evil, meditate, and connect with God. He has remained there ever since. Number 10, Hermitage of San Columbano. How do you feel about climbing up a nearly 400-foot rock face or 102 rock-carved stairs with arms loaded with groceries to get to your home? <laughs> If it means you can be far away from people, then it might be worth it. The Hermitage of San Columbano is a little under two miles from Ravaretto in northern Italy. It is a structure built on a sheer cliff face. Natural rock roofing shelters it from the elements, while its location makes it tricky to access by locals and visitors alike. Legend has it that the structure was dedicated to a saint who, when he was a young knight, killed a deadly dragon. The dragon was supposedly responsible for killing children who had been baptized in the Lino River below. The church dates back to around the 10th century and was inhabited from 753. It is now open to the public, but it sure would make for a great hideaway from anyone who needed to break away from people. It's nestled into the cliff face, almost camouflaged, and also forms the starting point of the Treasures of Tromboleno route. Number 9. Agia Triada if you're tired of nosy neighbors peering over your fence or being disturbed by door knockers trying to sell you vacuum cleaners, then Agia Triada is the property for you. You might have a hard time trying to convince anyone to let you live in it, but it's likely to be the perfect fit. Agia Triada is a Holy Trinity monastery near the St. Stephen's Nunnery in Meteora that has been an organized monastery since 1362. It's perched at the very top of a giant rock, and there are around 140 steps just to get to the building. Once you reach it, though, the views will blow you away. There'd be no better place to spend your evenings than looking out over the land and beyond. The monastery has a chapel, a small church, and artwork dating back to around 1682. Believe it or not, parts of this building were also used for the final scenes of the James Bond movie, For Your Eyes Only. Therefore, not only could you live somewhere completely isolated from neighbors, but in a house you recognize every time you watch a movie. Number 8. Church of St. Johann in Ranui, Italy 
With a backdrop of forests, dramatic mountains, and a blanket of blue sky, there'd be no better place to spend your days than in the Church of St. Johann in Ranui, Italy. Unfortunately, this isolated structure is not one you can call home, but it is available for rent should you want to hire it for your wedding. The church and a nearby farm are the only structures around for miles, and that'll surely suit anyone who's not a fan of the outside world. The church has a shingle-pitched roof, a bell tower, and stunning artwork with full walls of paintings to add vibrancy and historical relevance. Probably more interesting, though, is the marbled wood altar on the inside. This structure has two paintings that show St. John Nepomuk presenting his tongue to Jesus. Absurd, sure, but adding to the appeal of this isolated building all the same. If you chose to call this church home, you could be close to life's necessities, but far enough away to enjoy whisper-quiet farmland all day, every day. And not a door-to-door -door salesperson in sight. Number 7. Tristan de Cunha, Tristan, Atlantic Ocean if you ever wanted a decent excuse to miss a family vacation, then how about, uh, sorry mom, I'm stuck on an inaccessible island with a seven day boat ride to get back. It's one of the reasons I became an explorer. That island is Tristan de Cunha, and it's a British outpost in the South Atlantic Ocean. There's no airport or deep harbor, and the only way in or out is on one of the nine boats that arrive every year. Once you're there, you can't leave for a month, and that's many people's idea of bliss. Tristan de Cunha is home to a volcano cone, a small hospital, roads, a pub, a rundown golf course that chickens roam, and very little else. Around 270 people call it home, and they cover a 38 square mile area. As far as industry goes, potatoes are the island's main crop. They also export lobsters and crawfish and raise livestock for island consumption. Tristan de Cunha is very much self-sufficient, so if you wanted to live somewhere off the beaten track and away from outsiders, this would be the very island to choose. Number 6. Lukomir, Kanjik, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Technology is taking over, and this modern era can be stressful for those who don't feel like they can disconnect. <laughs> If you want to escape from people and the digital age, then the village of Lukomir is the place to go. Just don't start your travels in winter, for you'll only be able to access it by skis. Lukomir is a 300-year-old village that sits nearly 5,000 feet above sea level, around 30 miles from Sarajevo. It's thought to be the most isolated village in Herzegovina and Bosnia, which is sure to suit anyone who's not a fan of the hustle and bustle of city life. While many towns and cities have evolved over time, this village hasn't. It still has old stone houses with cherry wood shingles, and women who live there even dress in wool garments that they would have worn over a century ago. Access to Lukomir is via a paved road, which turns to a dirt road for the final leg of the journey. Snow covers it throughout winter, making it only possible to enter with a robust pair of skis. However, if you do make the trip, you'll be well cared for. Lukomir locals offer you homemade Bosnian pie, tea or coffee, and share stories of their life. Number 5. Adrir Amalal, Siwa Oasis, Egypt. There's something refreshing about being on holiday. Time doesn't matter and you can live life at a leisurely pace. If you wanted to live like that all the time and away from the stresses of the outside world, then pack your bags and head off to Siwa Oasis, Egypt. And finally made it to the Siwa Oasis. They weren't lying when they put Oasis in the settlement's name. There are over 300 freshwater streams and springs, thousands of olive trees and date palms, and a giant saltwater lake. Not to mention roads that link Siwa to the Mediterranean coast to make it easier to access. There's no better place to spend your free time than lounging around the tropical-like paradise of Siwa Oasis. There's no shortage of things to do either if you don't fancy being a couch potato the whole time. You can view the ancient mud brick town that sits above Siwa's main square and browse through the Siwa Museum with relics from days gone by. The limestone Mountain of the Dead and Temple of the Oracle are a short distance away as well. If you're not one to enjoy time spent in traffic jams and surrounded by crowds, then start planning a trip to Egypt sooner rather than later. Number 4. Just Room Enough Island, Canada. 
Have you ever felt crowded in your own home? Door-to-door -door salespeople turning up to hock off their latest and greatest vacuum cleaner and even the mother-in-law calling in uninvited multiple times a week. It can all get too much. Well, we've got the perfect home for you. East of Ontario on the St. Lawrence River is Just Room Enough Island. And, well, there's just room enough for a house and not a lot else. This island is the smallest of 1,864 in the Thousand Islands Archipelago that New York and Ontario share on the Canadian-US border. It's around 3,300 square feet, which is around the size of a tennis court, and has a house, a small beach area, and a tree. The Sizeland family purchased the island and home in the 1950s as a vacation lodge, and it quickly became a popular tourist destination due to its uniqueness. Its popularity is probably quite unfortunate if you were buying it to get away from people, though, as there's always someone lurking around to see what it's like. Even though it doesn't look like a real island, it's as legitimate as they come. It meets all the requirements, such as having one living tree, remaining above the water throughout the year, and being at least one square foot. Number 3. Bishop Rock, Isles of Skilly, Great Britain. If you don't mind occasional lousy weather and having to get your groceries in by boat, then escaping to the Bishop Rock Lighthouse might be something to consider if you want to avoid the outside world. Bishop Rock Lighthouse is on the Isles of Skilly in Cornwall and dates back to the 19th century. Because of how much of a battering it takes from the heavy seas, it had to be built stronger than any other structure in the area. The lighthouse builders learned that early on when their first efforts were swept away before they could install the lanterns. It has a solid drum base with granite blocks, iron tie bars, and a granite encasement. It's also over 140 feet above the level of high tide. If you're all about the best views when you're property shopping, then you'll get all that and more with the Bishop Rock Lighthouse. Even the Isles of Skilly are going to be attractive for anyone looking to escape modern life. They consist of over 50 small islands and a cluster of islets nearly 40 miles from Land's End. Number 2. Paro Tech Sang, Paro Valley, Bhutan. If you usually have trouble reaching your 10,000 steps quota, then that could be a thing of the past by laying down roots in the Paro Valley in Bhutan. You have to go back up. Ah! Look up and you'll spot a temple with 13 monasteries, also called tiger lairs, that were long used by Buddhists for meditation in the 8th century. Legend has it that the holy Buddha Padmasambhava arrived at a cave high in the mountains on back of a flying tiger. Given the structures around 10,000 feet above sea level, we'd say he got off lightly. Everyone else has to walk, and it's not a journey for the faint of heart. From the valley floor, which is about 7,000 feet above sea level, you have to climb for around 2 hours to get to the tiger's nest 3,000 feet above. That means just to get to the temple, you're already 10,000 feet above everyone else. The steep trail is the least of your problems, because you also have to tackle the altitude, mist, and the views down to the ground, which surely make your stomach drop. Still, living here would sure cut down on receiving unexpected guests. Number 1. Chess Pavilion, Mount Huashan, China. If you're not afraid of heights, exercise, or new experiences, then are you ready for one of the world's most dangerous hiking experiences? Here's how we're attached. Mount Huashan in China will deliver. The mountain is over 7,000 feet high and is one of five of China's most sacred mountains. But unlike other mountains that are 100% natural, there are hidden gems within this one. As you climb, Taoist temples are dotted around the mountain, with shrines, tea houses, and pathways carved into crags. According to ancient Chinese legend, the main path up Mount Huashan took 3,000 years to build, and it spans around 7.5 miles, but nearly 6,000 feet skyward. That's all quite exciting and interesting, but what about the chess pavilion? Seemingly out in the middle of nowhere, a pagoda sits on a rock face with what looks like no way in or out. The only way to access it is with a dangerous climb down a rock face, making use of metal bars and old footholds. Once there, you can enjoy breathtaking views and a game of chess. 
That's one way to escape the outside world, that's for sure. Sure, living in a neighborhood with dozens of other houses is fine for street barbecues and having someone to collect your mail when you're away. But wouldn't some peace and quiet be nice? Would you live in any of these places? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.